Hey guys, how are ya? A car vlog. I've not been doing these very often since I sold my Canon DSLR, my ADD. Part of me wishes I didn't sell it because it was a good, really good camera. Although a new Canon is coming out, which I think I'm gonna pick up once it's released, which means a lot more car vlogs. I kinda like these car vlogs. It's much more, uh, it's much more informal, I suppose, you know? Even though the video quality is not as nearly as good as a cinema camera, but nonetheless. Mm. So let's talk about um, what we're going to be doing with the YouTube channel so you understand what's going on. So I slowed down my video output on YouTube because I was busy with this, that, and the other thing, my, my, my main business. YouTube has been for me, it was more or less a hobby to begin with. I wanted to see what would happen. And also it was a way for me to improve my ability to speak on camera and improve my understanding of audio and video. It, it's as much a hobby for me as it is anything else. Now as a side effect of it, the channel grew. We're at 87,000 subs at this point in time. And that's cool and it creates awareness for my, my my course material and my business. So it's been very good for me in that regard, which was um, a surprise to be totally honest with you. I had no expectations of that. So where are we going to go now? Well, as, uh, as always, I'm going to try to take the YouTube game and my content creation game to another level. And uh, Studio Web 4, Studio Web 4, is just about to come out. That last 5% of the app, and that last, we're down to the last 2% of the app is taking forever. It's usual chasing down those bugs, squashing them. So this is where I jump back into the game a lot and I get involved where I'm, I'm hammering the app, testing it, and making sure everything is cool and I unearth issues and I forward it to the developers and they fix it and it comes back and forth. So that's been taking up a lot of my time. Once that is out, it opens up a whole bunch of possibilities for me in terms of new content. Anybody who's done my Studio Web based courses, you get that interactive web developer course or the Python course, they know, they'll tell you, it's very different from anything else out there, like totally different. I developed the Studio Web platform because there was nothing out there that met my needs in terms of an educational platform. One of the reasons my courses are so successful in terms of uh, people learning easily and quickly is that is the, is the Studio Web platform. The platform is actually integrated with the course video content and the quizzing and so forth. It's all designed around some basic concepts uh, in education. I come from a family of teachers. I studied psychology. I taught martial arts for many years. I've been building courses since 2002. So all this is integrated into that and it just makes the learning experience that much better. So Studio Web 4, which was a total rewrite from scratch, incorporates even more of the ideas and capabilities that I wanted to have in the Studio Web platform. I couldn't do with Studio Web 3. Here's a lesson in software development. Studio Web 3 was a seven-year-old code base. Multiple developers worked on it. We have had to pivot the code, if you will, or pivot the use case of Studio Web based on the reaction we're getting from teachers and students. Studio Web is used by a lot of institutions, by the way, to teach uh, classrooms of students and, and professionals. So anyhow, so in the process, in a, in a piece of software's lifespan, you may at some point have to do a rewrite from scratch. It does happen. Apple had to do it with OS 10. They, they worked off the same code base up to OS 9, patching it, expanding it, patching it, expanding it. And then they decided, Steve Jobs made the brave decision a truly brave decision to basically say we're going to have to start over from scratch because the architecture behind our, the uh, Mac OS was just ancient. It was designed for an, uh, computers at a different era. So they had to drop OS 9, that whole code base. I think it was Pascal base, I recall. And they went to uh, OS 10, which was uh, based on Linux, Unix. So that it was a, a brilliant move because it allowed them to bring a much more powerful, much more capable operating system to the uh, to the market. So Studio Web 4 is 
in a very similar vein, Studio 4 is pretty much the same in the sense that the code base was based on older architectures. Uh, even right down to the database structure was designed for uh, a certain type of app. And over time, we've learned different things. And uh, so now the new database has been designed from the ground up with full knowledge of exactly at what Studio Web, what the Studio Web platform does and what it has to do. So it's just so much better. Much more advanced frameworks, uh, better database structure, better, better object structure, and uh, better front-end frameworks like we use Vue.js as an example. Back seven years ago, I had made the decision to not make Studio Web's UI responsive. Now Studio Web 4 is totally responsive, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All of this, I have a list like you know, is this long. I won't get into it. But at some point, you have to do that with a code base, and that's what it is. That's what it is. It's that you know. So when you do a rewrite, you're going to have new bugs, new problems. So there's that cost, and of course, when you're doing something new, it's that last five percent of the app, that last bit that takes up so much time. We've been working on the last you know. 5-10% for a while now. We're so close, we're literally days away. Any day now, it could launch. And uh, when that does, then all of a sudden I'm gonna have a lot of free time, a lot more free time to work on new content, new videos, uh, and to up that game. I won't get into what I plan on doing, but definitely I plan on upping the video game to go beyond just car vlogs or just be talking uh, in front of my camera uh, in my office or something. We'll see how it goes. Um, let me know in the comments below if you have any thoughts or feelings. Um, one thing in terms of the actual content, I am going to start covering uh, more languages. I teach HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, Python, PHP, SQL. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna cover some more languages and uh, more tech encoder news to give people perspective about, you know, what's, you know, this framework's coming out, how does that fit in the scheme of things? What do I think about it? This, this, this new language is coming out, what do, what do I think about that? Just to give you the perspective from somebody who's been doing this for well over 20 years, and uh, then you can, you know, this is more information, something to consider. A lot of the stuff that I see out there, a lot of the, uh, the commentaries and a lot of tutorials are put out by people who are still, in my opinion, juniors to intermediate level people with three to five years experience. They, they you don't see too often the, the, the uh, point of view of somebody who's been doing this for over two decades. And that's important because two decades of doing anything it gives you a level of understanding, a level of appreciation that you don't get with only, which you can have with only a few years of experience. So that's a very important uh, thing to consider. Yes, yes, 20 years of experience does give you perspective. And I remember I told this story before, it happened to me, I first ex experienced this personally when I was 18 or 19 in martial arts. And I had been doing martial arts for several years at this point, I started when I was 10. But I, had, I would do two years of this style, two years of that style, a year of this style. Year, so I was like intermediate level in many styles, but I wasn't really advanced because I hadn't worked my fundamentals really well at that point. And uh, so one of my teachers came up to me and said, Seth, you know, you're intermediate level in a bunch of styles, but you're not advanced. You should be expert level. So what you got to do, he says, you got to pick a style and develop that for two years. And then what's gonna happen, your whole game is just gonna shoot up like crazy. And I didn't quite understand that at the time, but I said to myself, okay, this guy's been doing martial arts much longer than me. He's, a, he's an expert, I'm not. So uh, I will take his advice and I will just concentrate on that and build that up. And sure enough, he was right. Within a couple years, I, I was able to really develop my skills, and what happened is it caused my game across all the styles I knew to jump up really high level much more quickly than it would have happened if I would have just kept doing a little bit there, a little bit of this, a little bit there, a little bit of this. So yes, sometimes you have to defer, even though it may not make sense to you now, sometimes you have to defer to somebody who's been doing something for 20 years when you've only been doing it for one or two years or three years. They will have perspective that you don't have. All right, yeah, so uh, 
once again on one of my long tangents. So you're gonna see many more car vlogs, especially when I get my new camera, because this thing freezes, but I might, I don't know, anyway, we'll get into that. You're gonna see uh, a broader range of language subjects, and also a lot more entrepreneurial stuff, freelancing stuff, uh, real world freelancing stuff. I see a lot of uh, people out there who are trying to sell you Bitcoin investment, and now they're trying to sell you uh, e-commerce investment. I think uh, if somebody was telling you to invest in Bitcoin, it was a great thing when it was at 16, 17, 18, 19,000 a coin. Now it's down back to seven. Um, I don't know. I would consider once or twice before listening to people who told you to buy Bitcoins when they were near their all-time high. Because obviously those people lack a certain level of sophistication when it comes to investments in business. All right, we'll talk soon.